Hare Krishna. So we'd like to welcome a very, very special guest today for our uh, Russian Sunday program. Uh, his name is Pushpalan Prabhu. Um, he has kind of need to, uh, pre- to be present at our program. And just a few words about him. So he he's a senior disciple of Srila Prabhupada. He joined in the late 60s in Washington DC, then later on he moved to the temple and became full-time devotee and, and he, he has incredible history of uh, spiritual uh, and spiritual life and uh, today he's going to speak about some something very unusual, very special. He will give some give he will give us some uh, glimpses about you know the paintings which we have here uh, present on the walls, the story of each and every painting, and many other interesting things. So let's welcome him by a big Haribo. No. Haribo. 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 I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy that you're here. And how I got here is a we were in Gita Nagri for the Rath Yatra in Kashi Shwari, who I know. We were having lunch together and I told him, I said, oh, I'm going to be in New York. I'm babysitting my daughter's son. I'm doing daycare. And my wife and I are coming up. We live in Alachua, Florida. And we'll be, I'm here for a week and she's here for two weeks. He said, oh, can you come to Second Avenue and we'll speak to the devotees and tell us your stories of Srila Prabhupada. And I said, I don't have that many stories. I can tell my stories in 15 or 20 minutes. And I said, but I was the project manager for this restoration. And I can talk about these paintings for a long time because there's a lot of history here. And so... We'll sort of talk about my personal inter- encounters with His Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada. I'll tell you how I became a devotee, because everybody, when you meet people who don't know anything about Hare Krishna, they always ask one question. How did you become a Hare Krishna? H- have you experienced that? They want to know your story, because they want to see, how did you make the transition? So I'll tell you how I became a Hare Krishna because it's important because it's how I became involved in this restoration project. So uh, we'll start by talking about my remembrances and my direct association with His Divine Grace. We'll start with that first. Now, uh, I didn't have that much association, which is not uncommon. Even Srila Prabhupada himself only was with his Guru Maharaj on five different occasions. There are some disciples who are initiated by Srila Prabhupada but never met him, ever. They were initiated by letters. So the letter would say, I accept and I accept so and so and her name is now this. And then later they received second initiation from uh, you know, the initiating gurus after the founder of Acharya. So there are people who never met Srila Prabhupada who are his direct disciples. And then there are a very small portion who had tremendous intimate association. And then the bulk of us had not so much association because Um, Srila Prabhupada was always on the move. As you know, he circled the globe. Every year he would circle the entire planet. So, I was in New York, and which was a great place to be because this was the epicenter of Krishna consciousness as this room is the epicenter. So, we knew that Srila Prabhupada would come to New York every year, so you just stay. And then you make this year your place of service and it's guaranteed that Prophet will come every single year. So 
I stayed for three three years, and then I my my fate took me elsewhere. So back in those days, you could get initiated very very quickly, and that's actually an interesting story. It's not my my story, but in Yo Yogeshwar's book. Um, Swami in a Strange Land, he tells this story that Srila Prabhupada was leaving, this is 1967, he was leaving for India because he had had his stroke and his health was very poor and he was returning to India to have you know, his treatment. But he came to San Francisco for the Ratha Yatra, which was the first Ratha Yatra. He did not attend, but he came. So that evening after the Ratha Yatra, it was understood that Srila Prabhupada would be leaving the next day. If you wanted to be initiated, all you had to do was put your name on a piece of paper on a clipboard, and it would be turned in, and the next morning you could be initiated. It was just like that. So had you been on the parade and thought it was nice, you could just put your name on the piece of paper and Prabhupada would accept you. So it was pretty, that's causeless mercy, I imagine that. So I had been in the temple no more than five months and it was considered I was steady, following the principles, and I was eligible for initiation. Five months. I should say that when I joined, when I moved into the temple, I was 15 years old. When I saw the street San Kirtan in Washington, D.C., first I heard, I heard the cartels and the Murdunga over the sound of the traffic. It was a Friday night. I was in 10th grade, and I heard this, the, and I said, what is that sound? And I just was like, like a magnet, just drawn to that sound. And I saw the devotees, and I said, that's what I want to do with my life, right there. So it was just instantly, I, I, so at the end of 10th grade, I ran away from home. I was 15, I ran away from home. And I came to the temple in Washington D.C. Washington, D.C., and I shaved up, and i um, 15 years old. And at that time, the temple didn't know all better, and they accepted me. They allowed me to move in. And then 11th school, you know, the height of school was coming, so I had to go back home, and I went back home and shaved off my Sika. When I turned 16, which was two weeks after school began, I asked my father, can I drop out of high school? And reluctantly, he said, okay, okay. And I ran away from home again. <laughs> and he knew where I was going. And I ended up in Boston. And um, Sathru Maharaj, who was that time he was married, he was a householder, he wrote a letter saying, your son is being taken care of. He's not living on the street. He has a, a place to stay every night. He's eating three square meals, and he's being protected. He's not being molested. He's safe, and this is something that he wants to do. Would you please consider letting him do what he wants to do for a while? So he wrote that letter. I addressed it. I gave it to a devotee who was going to another city, and I said, mail it from another place. <laughs> Don't mail it where I live, where I am here in Boston. So they mailed it from some other place. My father got the letter, and he knew I was, you know, um, I was a very, um, do you know this word in English, incorrigible? It means uncontrollable. So I was incorrigible. I was actually had been in a mental institution when I was 13 years, years old. My father worked for the CIA, and he had a very big position. He worked in the Pentagon. He was an, an analyst. And you won't believe what my father studied. Soviet Union. <laughs> that was his specialty. 
and my father was uh, so I was considered a security threat so at the age of 13 I was put into an institution because from my father's work it was a problem so I was the problem child so at the age of 16 he allowed me to join the Hare Krishna movement within five months of being in the temple I was eligible for initiation I was 16 years old and I was living in Brooklyn on Henry Street and Srila Prabhupada came. I had been working in the press before the BBT existed. It was called ISCOM Press. And the press initially was in Boston and then they outgrew the, the facility. So the press moved to Brooklyn and I moved down with the devotees from Boston to Brooklyn and I was working in the press. And my only qualification was that in 10th grade, I took four periods of vo vocational printing. So based on that, I could work in the press. So Srila Prabhupada came. And at that time, he was initiating for seven straight days, 10 people a day. Every day there was a fire sacrifice for a week. And I was like the third or fourth day. Does everybody know if I say Pushkar? Do you know Pushkar, the uh, artist? No? Okay. Famous Eskon artist. We sat side by side and he was initiated first. So I'm Push Pavan and he's Pushkar. So Pushkar accepted his, you know, he got his name and he sat down. At the beginning of the fire, at the beginning of the initiation, we were told a few things. Approach Srila Prabhupada on the left, from the left side of the Vyasasan, and take your beads with the right hand. Okay? Very important point. So, something I haven't told you that at the age of 15, I stuttered very, very bad. I could barely, I could barely talk. It was something in my childhood. My daughter had it, and she outgrew it, but I stuttered really badly. So everybody was asked to say the four regulative principles. And I thought, if I'm asked to say the four regulative principles, I will have a total meltdown, and I will just be an embarrassment. So it was my turn, and I came up, and I offered my obeisances. I sat up, and I said, Shiva Prabhupada, please don't ask me the regulative principles. And of the ten people, I was the only one who did. 30 years later, in a Vyas Puja homage, I wrote, the ho I, wrote, I wrote this story down, and I had the four principles, and I said in my homage, I recited the regulative principles 30 years later, but I couldn't do it in person. It was, it was too much for me. And then we were supposed to reach for our beads with the right hand, Well, I reach for my beads with my left hand. And Srila Prabhupada pulled the beads back. And of course, now my anxiety level is like 10 times greater. Because what just happened? I don't know. What's happening? I don't, I didn't understand. So I reached again with my left hand. And he pulled the beads back again. So a third time, I reached for the beads. And Prabhupada said, tell him. I reached for my beads with the right hand. Prophet gave me Raya beads. And he said, because he would, and then he, he said, your name is Pushpala. He said, so, he said it was something I could never, I didn't understand then, I can hardly understand it now. He said, it is a name of Krishna. In the, in the Gayatri Mantra, with this word Pushpa, P 
Pushpa Vinaya is, is the name of, Cu of Krishna. The Cupid who shoots arrows into the heart, that's the Pushpa, Pushpa Vinaya. Arrows with flowers on them. So Prabhupada said, so it is the name of uh, Cupid? And he said, you are like Cupid. <laughs> But he said, but do not forget that Krishna is the Supreme Cupid. So I offered my obeisances. I just wanted to melt into the floor and disappear. I was so nervous. I was so nervous. So unqualified. I mean, I joined the movement, didn't know anything about the philosophy. Didn't know, didn't know anything. I mean, what, you know, didn't study, never opened a book. I simply saw was attracted to the mantra, and that was it. And I moved in, and the temple was so open, they allowed me to move in. It was like that. You know? just, it was just so mag magnanimous, so, so open. Pro Prophet was just, anyone who showed any interest at all, you could get initiated. You know? Then later, Things became a little more strict. You should study, and there would be what was called the Bhakti Shastra test. You'd have to study, you'd have to learn some verses from the Bhagavad Gita and write a essay. But that, that came later. You know. So that was my initiation. And I have no chronological order for these stories, okay? So in 1976, I saw Srila Prabhupada again. He came to Washington, he was there for a week. And at that time, I had become the head cook. I told you how nervous, nervous I was and how much I stuttered. I was terrified to go out onto the streets and distribute magazines or, or chant. Just the thought of being in the public was like, for me, was incomprehensible because I was still stuttering a great deal and I was very nervous. So I thought, what can I do that's of value but will save me from going out? So as a little boy of like 11 years old, I used to cook the family meal. I was very attracted to cooking. So I would cook. I would cook these. I would also open a cookbook and my parents would get me the ingredients in it and I would cook. So I told the temple president, I know how to cook. I'm only, now I'm, now I'm what, 19, 18, 19, maybe, maybe I'm 20. Actually, the cooking started earlier, but, so he said to me, he said, well, I'll think about that. And then the next day he said, I've been thinking about the fact that you know how to cook. You're now in charge of the kitchen. So, when Srila Prabhupada came, 150 to 200 people, other devotees came from all over, all over the, all over, you know, the East Coast to be with Prabhupada, and he was there for a week. I was totally overwhelmed with my service of having to cook for so many people. It was really hard. And I had a really good friend, his name was Ambo Jaksha. He was a Brazilian devotee. He was much older than, than I was. He was actually a filmmaker. He was very accomplished. He was an artist. He was an actor. He had all the, all the artistic skills. He was like 10, 12 years older than me. We were, for some reason, we were really good friends. Brazilian, and he, he passed away maybe five or six years, years ago. So before I tell you the story about how Srila Prabhupada, because these stories are coming back to me, I'll, I'll go from 76 to 75 now, okay? We're in Philadelphia at the airport arrival, and I'm with Ambo Jaksha. And he comes to me and said, even though he's like 10, 12 years older than me, I've seen Prabhupada, and he, he never has. So he comes to me and says, You've seen Prabhupada, you've been with him, I never have. What should I do? What should I do? So he asked me this question. So that day, at that time, there was no TSA, 
we would take over the airport and we'd be chanting and jumping over the seats, throwing flowers, you know, kirtan, just really, really out of control. You can't do that now. But back then, you could. <laughs> so, Srila Prabhupada's plane comes around and it turns into the gate. And I know that Srila Prabhupada is on that plane. And the devotees are going crazy. They're rushing to the gate. And I said, let's go to where he's going to come and speak. There was a, 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 a Vyasa sign set up. I said, let's go there. We'll get really good spots because we'll be waiting. Everyone will, will meet him at the gate, but we'll be in position. He goes, okay, but whatever you say. He was like totally surrendered to me. So we're waiting, and there's like 10, 12 other people there. Srila Prabhupada comes in and he sits down, and just then, a young female disciple walks up with a whole plate of fruit for Srila Prabhupada and gives it to Ambojaksha. Just gives it to him. So, so he now understands, she's saying, I can't offer this to Srila Prabhupada, but you can. So now Ambo Jaksha has the plate. He's never been, a, never been with Srila Prabhupada before. So I have to stand up to show you what he did. I told you he was very artistic. He was really a actor. So what he does is he goes down like Hanuman. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and he's offering the plate to Prabhupada and he's kneeled down. And Prophet sees this. And he takes the water and he rinses his hand and he gets the plate back to Ambo Jaksha. So it was such an amazing story. So we're back now in Washington, D.C., 1976. And I had been cooking the entire week, and I was really frustrated because I was missing morning walks. I was missing the afternoon, evening darshan. I was missing class. And I felt like I'm missing everything. I just felt like, and I was overwhelmed with the service because for a cook, there is nothing worse than not making enough prasad. That is like the worst thing that you can do. And these devotees, I couldn't make enough. Now, no matter how much I made, it wasn't enough. So every day I was like, okay, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. Well, cook two, two batches, three batches. It didn't matter. I could have cooked. It was like Durvasamuni with his <laughs> 10,000 disciples. You just can't feed them. You know, it's impossible. So I was really frustrated. The temple president was really giving me a hard time, like, you know, you, you, you just have to get up earlier. You, you, you just have to, you just have to, you know, like, whatever you have to do, you got to figure it out and do it. So I was under a lot of pressure and a lot of frustration because I felt like Srila Prabhupada was here, but I was missing everything. So what happened was late in the week, well, as probably everybody knows, at the end of the Bhagavatam class, they would bring Srila Prabhupada a big plate of cookies or fruit or sweets, and he would pass them out, right? Everyone knows that, right? So I got out there after, you know, trying to, you watch this, uh, you know, getting the kitchen covered, I went out and it was three rows deep, disciples lined up to get the cookie. And I thought, here we go again. This is like, this is like my, this is like, this is, you know. So I had this idea. I, said, I went to Ambo Jaksha and I said, I've got this idea. I said, 
I'm going to grab your arm, and you're going to grab my arm. And I'm going to put my foot against your foot, and we're going to make a V, and you're going to counterbalance my weight. You follow that? Everyone understand that? And everyone got that? Mm -hmm. Because if I, and then I said, I'm going to reach all the way in. And you, and your weight counterbalances my weight. And if we slip, I'm falling into, uh, onto the Vyasasan, and it's going to be horrendous. But I, so we, we grabbed on, we counterbalanced, and my hand, I'm all of the way in. Now, everybody's hand is like this, okay? <laughs> My hand is like this. So, Srila Prabhupada is coming around, giving, giving out the cookies. And he comes to me, and my hand is a whole hand in farther. And he stops. And I'm looking at him, and I, his eyes are going up my arm. And then we lock gaze, and we're staring at each other into each other's eyes. And, and, and I'm just looking at him, and he's looking at me. Prabhupada takes the cookie, puts it into my hand here, okay? Here. And he takes his thumb and he drills his mm -hmm. thumb into the palm of my hand and he twists it back and forth. Really hard. And I was like, wow. <laughs> wow. And this was 40 plus years ago, so I've had plenty of time to think about this. And my two takeaways from this is that, one, it's like I'm marking you. You're, I, I've marked you now. I have noted you and I've marked you. And then the other thing was that I felt that maybe at that moment, at that moment, I was the most eager for Prabhupada's mercy. And he was acknowledging that, just for that moment. And uh, so I turned to Ambo Jaksha and said, we did it, we did it, we did it, we did it. <laughs> also, uh, during that time, um, who knows who Bhavananda is? In Mayapur, okay? Bhavananda was married, and his wife's name was Palika. And in Brooklyn, Palika was very much involved in the initiates, getting the initiates ready for initiation. So Palika and I were, we were very, she was very involved. And so Palika was Srila Prabhupada's personal cook, and she was traveling around the world. Sometimes it'd be Jamuna, sometimes it would be Upendra, sometimes it would be Shruti Kirti Prabhu, and sometimes it would be Palika. Palika was personally trained by Srila Prabhupada's sister, Pishima. So she's personally, personally trained. So Palika was Prabhupada's personal cook. And because I was in the kitchen in, in Washington, D.C., we would interact back and forth. So one day she said, um, at one o'clock, come up and pick up Srila Prabhupada's plate, what, pick up his, his remnants after, after lunch. Okay. So I went up there, and Polika said, here's Prabhupada's plate. And I have, there's something about me, and, I, and even to this day, I, I just like to share. I don't like to keep it for myself. So I looked at Prabhupada's plate, and there was a bitter melon that was half bit a fried bitter melon that was half eaten. So I knew that Srila Prabhupada ate the other half. 
So I took that piece and I ate that, that, that piece and I gave the rest of Prabhupada's plate away. You know? And then, you know, you know the story of um, Narada Muni. When he's talking to Vyasadeva in the Bhagavatam, that Narada Muni was talking about his previous life. And he was saying, in my previous life, I was simply the son of a, a maidservant. You know, I was like, I was like, you know, just, I had no position. I was, a, I, you know, I was not Narda. I, I was in, you know, the son of a maidservant. And that the Maharajas would travel there, like, throughout the year, but during the four months of the rainy season, they would stop and stay in one place because travel was very di difficult. That was during the Chateau Moss which we're in now. And it's described that they stopped and Narada Muni's mother would do menial service for them and then she would pre prepare the meals. And then Narada, in his previous life, he was associating with the sadhus. And he said, only once did they allow me to eat the remnants from their plate. Only once. So it's not that I'm saying I'm going to become Narada Muni. <laughs> But I'm saying that the benediction was available. It's so potent. So I was able to eat Prabhupada's rem his direct remnants once. And, um, when Srila Prabhupada came to the temple in Washington, D.C., it was in Potomac. And, you know, Washington, D.C. is very colonial. You know, it's like, it was, that's where, you know, that's, this, of course, the seat of the government, but it was a very British, uh, and it was a very, it was colonial. How else can I say it? So we decorated Srila Prabhupada's apartment and his, his, his darshan room and his personal room in a very colonial way. The, the fabric, the curtains, the, the bedspread, it was all very Americana and very in period. So Srila Prabhupada walked into his quarters for the first time coming from the airport. And he, he walked and he goes, oh, George Washington. <laughs> so his quarters became known as the George Washington Room. And it's still there today. So that's a little, little transcendental trivia. Also in Potomac. Very interesting story. And because we're all adults, I can tell you the other half. I usually don't, if I'm speaking to younger children, I don't tell them the second half of the story, but I'll tell you, because it, it's, it's not so nice. So, there was this man, his name was Mike, maybe 30, 35. And he would move into the temple, move out of the temple, move back in, move back. And he would argue. He knew enough of the philosophy that he could argue and say, well, why should I do this? Why should I, I do that? Why should I do this? So, he, you know, he was like very unsurrendered, you could say. He just, he, he wasn't willing to commit himself. But he was attracted, so he'd move in and he would move out. So when Srila Prabhupada was coming to Washington, he, he moved in. And once at the end of the class in the morning, the Bhagavatam class, Srila Prabhupada said, are there any, any questions? So he put his hand up. He said, Srila Prabhupada, how do you deal with skepticism? It's like the perfect question. How do you deal with skepticism? And Srila Prabhupada said, skepticism? means rascalism, and we cannot deal with rascals. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Just. It's described that the guru is heavy, and whether he chastises you, or whether he praises you, or, or, or encourages you, it's the same, because you're getting his, or you're getting his mercy. But Many, many people had this experience that when you were in Srila Prabhupada's presence, 
who felt that he could see right into you? Almost everybody had that. I mean, I can't speak, you know, in totality, but it was a very common experience for the disciples that you felt that sure Papa, like an x-ray could see right through you, right through your eye. You could see all of your anartas. And we felt that Srila Prabhupada spoke to this person, Mike, in exactly the way that he dealt with him was so perfect that skepticism means rascalism, and we cannot deal with rascals. In other words, if you want to be nonsense, Krishna cannot save you. If you don't want to surrender, because we have the free will, then nothing is going to save you. You know, it's not like there's some magic pill, like, like, like the Swami touches you on the head and you see the light, and, you know, it's not like that, you know. You have, bhakti means you have to willingly give your heart. You means you have to willingly accept that you're not the supreme enjoyer, that, that your, your, your perfection is, is in harmony with Krishna's desire. But if, you, if, if you're going to be stubborn, then nothing, it doesn't matter what's going to happen. So the other half of the story is really kind of sad. So sometime later, six months, a year later, I don't remember the time, the time frame, his wife came to the temple and she said, Mike is missing. I haven't seen Mike in a month. So she put out a missing persons report with the, with, with the police. What had happened was Mike had been dealing large quantities of drugs, and he was, he was $10,000 in debt to his source in Miami. So he went down there, and he was murdered. He was shot in the back. And his body was driven up to Washington, D.C. and just dumped on the street. And they know that he was murdered elsewhere because there was no blood. And we can draw our own con conclusions, but this we feel like this is why he was moving in and moving out, that he was hiding and he was he was he just couldn't he just couldn't couldn't surrender. So yeah. So he, one night his wife got a call from the detective and they said, we have this body, we don't know who it is. And she, she said instantly, she said, that's my husband. And she went down and she had to view, she said, that's him. Kind of a heavy story, uh, I'm sorry, it's, it's not so sublime. I once told this to a group of young children and they got very upset so I, I, I don't tell that story but I think it's important to put the two parts together you have to see it in the totality so, um, so I saw Srila Prabhupada here in New York in 76 his triumphant parade you know the Rathiatra down Fifth Avenue, where he was triumphant. He had been in, he'd only been in America for 11, you know, only started his movement for 11 years. And I saw him ride, ride, ride down. And from Washington, he went to New York, Marathiatra. And then from New York, he went to London. And then from London to Paris, Paris to the Paris farm, which is called New Mayapur. And then gradually he worked his way back to India. And his health was declining more and more. And we never saw him again. He came as far back as London. He was on his way to Geet to Gitanagari, but he was too too sick. So he turned around and he went back to uh, to Vrindavan. And then, you know, we sort of, ent we knew that he was going to be, you know, we were getting reports 
we're getting reports and letters and and it's now viewed as a great mistake, but we were told that we were, we were to stay in our temples and not go to Vrindavan, not go to see them. So many of us did not go. You know, and now we understand later that maybe that wasn't the right thing. Um, Srila Prabhupada was um, very ill. And we had 24-hour kirtan around the world. And I had just had my four wisdom teeth pulled out. And then the, the dentist said, whatever you do, don't open your mouth for a couple of days. Because one of the teeth had a hook on the end. And when they pulled the tooth out, it ripped my jaw, and they had to suture it up with five or six stitches. And he said, this is a really, really serious wound. Try not to speak. Well, that happened to be Prabhupada's kirtan, the 24-hour kirtan. And we had... So I had a four-hour slot, and I was with a group of devotees, and we just sang our heart out for four hours, you know, what could we do? And I ripped all the, all the stitches in my mouth, and I had a big wad of cotton, I went back to, to the dentist and he screamed at me. I told you not to open your mouth. What did you do? You ripped them all. I said, I was singing. My my Guru Maharaj, and I just, you know. So, I just remember another story. During that time in Washington, D.C., that, that week in 1976, even though I was in all the responsibilities of having to cook, somebody from the temple had to be available 24 hours a day to assist the servant. So even I, you know, I was, so there was a sign-up sheet and I'm looking at the schedule. Midnight to 4 a.m. was available. I thought, that's the time Srila Prabhupada is up and he's translating. I said, I'll take that, that shift. All the other shifts were, were being filled up, but that shift, I thought, who wants to stay up? So I said, I'll take that shift. I can sleep later. So at midnight, I went and I, the servant, the, the local devotee was asleep. He was just lying up in the grass. They had to go wake him up. Hey, your shift is over. I'm on. So I knew that Srila Prabhupada would, would wake up at like 12, 12.30, 1 in the morning. So I'm standing in the total darkness outside of Prophet's quarters. His light goes on at 12.30. And I look and I see Srila Prabhupada. He's, he's, he's bare-chested bare because it's July. It's very hot. And he's wearing a gumshaw. And I've never seen Srila Prabhupada in such an intimate way. So I just offered my obeisances. And he went and he took a very quick bath. And he came out and went into his, his office studio, and he started to translate. At that time, he was working on the seventh canto. And there was a little window, very like that size, that painting size, and it was very high up. It wasn't to see in and out of, it was for air, air movement. And the window was open. And so I stood underneath the window for three hours 
just and I heard Srila Prabhupada speaking the Bhagavatam into his dictaphone and so the Supreme Lord. So I could hear the dictaphone clicking on and off and then it would be like a pause and then he would speak again. He was just speaking the purports. And so for three hours I just sat there and you know stood there just listening. And I felt like I felt so intimate, like this was really, really, really special. So even though I was in separation, I didn't see him personally, I felt like I was serving him, you know. Nobody nobody needed me and at four o'clock my shift was over. I went down to the kitchen and began cooking cooking breakfast. So whole night. Huh? You were on whole night. Yeah, I was up the in, entire night. So um, I told you I don't have that many stories, and that's very common, you know. Um, for most of us, we would, uh, I never wrote a letter, I never received a letter. I only, he only spoke to me once when he said at initiation, he only spoke to me directly once, and only once did we have that personal connection where he actually touched me and gave me the cookie. That's, that's, that's really high up on the problem, you know, mercy. And that's not uncommon. I mean, most of us, we're not, we're not traveling the world with them. That was, when I joined in 1969, the movement was already beginning to really explode. The years from 66 to 69, it was very easy to have Prabhupada's association. You could just go up into Prabhupada's quarters and you, know, you could knock and you could have lunch with him. You could, you know, it was, he was very accessible. But around 1969, 1970, exponentially the temple, the movement was expanding. Just, we were getting hundreds of people wanting to move in. Hundreds of mag, thousands of magazines were going out, and Hare Krishna was really, really, really beginning to take off. And Srila Prabhupada was traveling around the world. And, you know, he's having more and more in, in invitations. You see the stuttering? I still stutter occasionally. See, in, in, invitations. So, he would go to Nairobi, he would get an invitation to go to London, and on and on it went. So he was, he was just, you know, Jagat Guru, he's thinking about the global picture. And he's just planting seeds and he's just going around. So we, we, we saw him less and less and less. So I don't have that many stories, but I do have some. I, I once was speaking with an Indian man. This man was incredibly wealthy. And he said, I would write a check right now for a million dollars and give it to you if I could just have one moment's association with Srila Prabhupada. The man had, Srila Prabhupada had already passed on. But he said, I would write a check for a million dollars, just right now. What I took from that was that how priceless his association was. You know, how, if this man's willing to give up that much money it must be something of very great value to him. He must have some appreciation. So his appreciation helped me to appreciate. So I don't have that, that many stories. Other other disciples who could write books, Jamuna, Harisari, Ramananda. Yeah. You know these books. You know these devotees. And I tell you, those stories and those, they're fabulous reading. If, if you like to read and want to get a sense of Srila Prabhupada and what, you know, what it was like, you read those stories and they're just like, wow. Shab Shamasundar, his Chasing the Rhino, really has a flavor of a intimacy and immediacy. Hari Griva was a a university professor. He taught literature. He was Srila Prabhupada, was one of the very first of the four. He wrote two books. One was called Brindavan Days, and the other one was called The Hare Krishna Explosion. 
they're out of print, but if you Google, like I, I found them on Amazon, and so I was buying, uh, buying up the copies. Those two books, Vrindavan Days, Hare Krishna Explosion, those books are written in a style where you just feel as if it, it's like happening. You feel like you're right there. So, I wanted to talk about the paintings because I've been speaking for an hour. Is everyone okay? Sure. Okay. I don't know, you know. I know. So, I have to start the paintings by talking about myself again, okay? So in, indulge me in this. So, in 1967 and 1968, the hippie movement was, was really exploding, and everything India was, was crazy, you know, was really popular. For some reason, you know, India was, was the place, the spirituality, Swamis were coming, and in D.C. there was what they call head shops. You know what a head shop is? It's where you can go buy a pipe, drug paraphernalia, and you can buy Indian tops, kurtas, Indian dresses, and everything hippie, everything like that. It's where you a hippie would outfit himself. So there was a company called Bridge Bossy Press. It was founded in 1928. They, 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 they were founded in uh, Mathura. And Bridge Bossy Press published Krishna art posters. This is a Bridge, a bridge, bridge Bossy poster. This one here with uh, Yasoda and, and Krishna. In the back, Lord Ram. That's from a Bridge Bossy poster. So I would go to this head shop, it was called the Birdcage. And they would take these posters and pin them up really high, like samples, like you could buy this poster. My first contact in this life with Krishna was seeing the Bridge Bossy posters. I didn't know what they were. I saw Ayodhapati Ram, Lord Ram, with his associates. I, was, I saw the Ayodhapati Ram, and I also saw the Gopal Krishna. That's the one where Krishna has his arm around the calf. And they're, do, you, do you know the image? And they're sort of kneeling. They're, he's sitting on a rock. And it's a Vrindavan scene. So I saw these pictures, these posters. And I was like mes mesmerized. So the archana, the arch of Vigraha, can come in many forms, like Lord Jagannath is made of wood. The deity many times comes in stone and gems. Sometimes the deity comes within the mind. The, the, the archana, Krishna can appear, he can manifest himself through sound. That's the Mahamantra, the transcendental, the Shastra. And he can also he can appear in oil, in, in paintings. So Srila Prabhupada was very, very much involved in designing and working with artists. He actually, before he came to America, he had his three sets of the first canto where were published and they made a dust a dust jacket. You seen that dust jacket? A Bengali artist painted that, but Srila Prabhupada designed it. That was Prabhupada's um, he sketched it out and said this is what and this is a version of it which is here. Okay. So I was just mesmerized by these paintings. And I told you a little bit about myself, how I saw the devotees, and I went, that's what I want to do. One thing I didn't say about that, because I stuttered so much and was so self-conscious, I was so uncomfortable in my own skin. You know that, you know that saying, you're uncomfortable in your own skin? When I saw the devotees with shaved head and dhoti and saris, 
and people ridiculing them and mocking them, and they were like, they were not affected by that. That really impressed me, that you could be so different with a shaved head and a ponytail, you could be so different and it doesn't bother you, I'm so nervous and upset, I want to be like you. So that was one of the things that I could understand. I want to be like so. So. I had a, a good friend, his, his a Prabhupada disciple, his name is Dayananda Prabhu. He and his wife opened the Los Angeles temple. Dayananda was the facilitator here at 2nd Avenue, just like Kashi Shora Prabhu is the facilitator now. Dayananda was facilitating and they were publishing a little journal. And in that journal, there was a little, little ad saying, we would like to restore these paintings that we have because they're in very bad shape. Would you like to donate? Please send your donation, and the address was given. Well, this is like 1998. My wife and I have this thing about restoring old houses. We just spent one year in Alachua restoring a house that was 100 years, years old. We just, we're still working on it now, but we like old houses. So we had just restored a house that was about 80 years old. And I, I just love to take old things apart and save them and protect them and, and maintain them. So when he said, we would like to restore these paintings, would you please send a donation? The word restoration for me was like, wow, I sent $25. And then I called... Dayananda, and I called him up, I said, I know devotees in Los Angeles who do art restoration. They're professionals. And you might find this interesting, they're all Russian. <laughs> His name is Nathan Zuckheim. And he, the father, was Prabhupada's direct disciple. And then he had many, many children. And his two of his children took up to the rest, the restoration. And I said, I know some restorators in Los Angeles. I'll get you the phone number. So I made one or two telephone calls. I got the number of Nara 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 Narayan, and I sent it to Diana. And I said, these are these are the restorators, okay? So a few weeks pass. I called them up and I said. Have you spoken to Nara Narayan? He said, no. I called him again. He said, have you spoken to Nara, Nara Narayan? He said, no, I haven't done that yet. I said, can I take over the project? I said, I like to restore old things. He said, sure. So, in 1970, in Brooklyn, 1971, the word was put out that Srila Prabhupada was, was going to go back. He was starting, he was, maybe he was in, no, no, it was later. No, it was later. It was like 73. And Srila Prabhupada wanted to go to India, and he wanted to have Western disciples to accompany him, and they were going to do Sankirtan, you know, the idea of the dancing white elephants, that India had rejected their culture. But if he could bring some Westerners and show the, the Indians, look, these people have taken your culture. Maybe you should reconsider. So Nara Narayan wanted to go join Srila Prabhupada. Well, I had a beautiful guitar. Beautiful gu guitar. Over $400, this guitar. This is 1974. I mean, this is like a beautiful guitar. I used to play the guitar a little bit. So I said, I'll sell my guitar for you, and then you can help. That'll be a donation towards your ticket to go join Srila Prabhupada in India. Well, it also turns out that Nathan Zuckheim 
my name is Nathan too. So we had this connection. So I called up Nara Narayan. I said, do you remember me? He goes, how could I forget you? You sold your guitar and you, you were one of the people that, that let me go join Srila Prabhupada in India. And he said, well, I'm in charge of restoring all of these paintings in, at Second Avenue. And would you, would you help? And he said, I'm very, very busy. Yeah. <laughs> Does anyone know who Getty was? J, J. Paul Getty? It was Getty and it was Mellon. These were industrialists in the 18th and 19th century. These were the big uh, um, barons. And Getty made millions of dollars through oil. And there's a museum called the Getty Museum in Los Angeles. And all the, the you know, the, some of the finest paintings in the world were in the Getty Museum. And Nathan Zuckhan, Nara Narayan, was one of the restorators. So he was one of the best restorators in the world. And he said, I'm really busy. But, and I, so I, I sent him photographs. He goes, oh. So we arranged it. I, oh, and another important component. Dayananda said, there's an Indian lady who lives in Brooklyn, and she's coming to Second Avenue. And she has agreed to finance the restoration. She said, I'm secretly spending my children's inheritance. So these paintings, I'll show, I'll show them to you. Hare Krishna. So he's a professional restorator in doing work at the Getty M Museum. And he, each painting he said that he restored in here, he would charge no less than $10,000. And he said, I will do it for you at cost. So this painting, this painting, this one, this one, and I believe that one in the back, he restored at the cost of $1,700 to $2,000 just for the cost of the materials. This painting costs $3,000 to restore. And I want to show you something, okay? I'll, I'll, come, I'll come here. So one of the problems, why don't you give me a chair or a, a cushion or something? Okay, we're good. So you see this plastic? First of all, anything he did can be undone, okay? Because we're restoring, but we're not going to damage it by making something we can't undo. So all of the paintings were suffering from, believe it or not, gravity. Gravity was putting pressure on the canvas, and they were, and the paint was beginning to chip. So this is mylar, and it, it holds the canvas in midair. So there's absolutely no stress on this can, the canvas whatsoever. These stretcher bars are handmade, custom fitted, and inside here there's mechanical screws. So this is how you would tighten the, uh, the paintings you can get the perfect tension on every single canvas. And then you would apply the mylar, and then the painting is, is clean. So all of these paintings were filthy. Because imagine 40 years of incense and gee wicks, and they were hanging in temple rooms. So what they do they take an active solvent on a little cotton swab, little tiny square, one inch at a time. And then it's dirty, they throw that away. They get another cotton swab. Okay. They throw that one away. 
And as soon as they get a little color, which is the paint, they take another solvent and they neutralize the wash. And they do one inch at a time, one inch at a time, all the way across, all of the way down. And before they can even clean their painting, they have to wash and get all the, the, um, the, the varnish off. So the work was very, very extensive. So each painting has at least $10,000 worth of restoration. And we were able to restore these. And um, it was a three-year project. To win the confidence of the temple, because I said, I'm now in charge. You know, you said I could be in charge. So I have to take the paintings. And they said, whoa, 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 what are you talking about? So I, I, so I have paintings also from this period, my personal paintings that have come to me. By honest means, I didn't take them from a temple, I inherited them honestly, that's important. So I said, I'll give you all of my paintings to hang here in the temple as collateral, and then we'll send these off to Los Angeles to have them restored. So that's how I was able to win the confidence of the temple authorities that I've got now skin in the game, you know, like I'm now, I'm now invested. So for me, because I was saying my first contact with Krishna in this life was through the imagery, I felt like this was a way for me to give back to that. The first time I went to India in 1978, I, you could still buy the Bridge Vasi posters, they were still available. The good ones were printed in Germany. So I was there for three weeks. I, I went from Vrindavan to Mathura, and I went from shop to shop to shop buying the posters. And a man came up to me with his address. He said, you might want to come to my house, I want to show you something. So I went there. It turned out that the man was the founder of Bridge Bossy Press. And in his kitchen, he had all the paintings that I had seen at the head shop were now in his kitchen. I saw the Ayodhya Ram. I saw the Gopal Krishna. A painting that I had never seen before was the Rasa dance. And these paintings were like five and six feet wide by five and six feet tall. And his entire kitchen was all marble and it was completely covered with the paintings. And he said, I started Bridge Bossy Press in 1928 and it was very popular. He said we would sponsor the artists, they would live in the temples and they would produce posters and we, you know, they would produce the originals and we would have them printed in Germany because the, 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 the good printing was done on, on, on these Heidelberg presses. And then we would bring them back, and we would sell them. And for 20, 30, 40 years, it was a fantastic business. Because and, 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 everyone saw Krishna in these images. These are non different from the Lord himself. So he said, gradually over time, the styles change, and the colors change. And the mood of the country changed, and the business, and then he said, my, my children, he said, I was getting to be old, my children didn't want to go on with the business, they wanted to open a fire truck equipment company, they wanted to build fire, fire prevention equipment. So he said, so the business kind of just petered out, you know. So that first time I went and bought all the posters that I could get, and I brought them back, and I, I have some that are framed. So, for me, this restoration was very important because I felt like these, these images brought me to Krishna consciousness. That's how Krishna approached me. And I, and I want to, I just want to set this aside. No, we just set it here and then or elsewhere. Sorry, can I make pictures? And then we can we can do can it. You, can I make pictures? With oh, I have pictures. No, with you. Oh, pictures. Oh, okay. I, I have pictures. Very, because of... you restorations, I think it's very 
No. I have because pictures I'm of the of pictures person. that I'm going to be giving you too. Okay. So when I was doing this restoration, I did a database search. And I okay. came up with about 175 letters that Srila Prabhupada wrote to his disciples about the paintings. So I've brought a few, and I've, I've highlighted some because they're very interesting. So this is dated, uh, Srila Prabhupada is in Bombay, and he's sending a letter to Jadarani in Boston. Please accept my blessings. I am pleased to hear that the paintings on Canto 3 have been finished and that more paintings for Volume 3 have been have begun. Listen, listen to this. At least 50 to 100 paintings should appear in each volume. And that, and that will be the perfection of your service for Lord Krishna. 50 to 100 paintings in each book, in each volume. Srila Prabhupada really used this medium because he said, it's one thing to read, to read, but if you can look at an image and understand something of the philosophy just looking at the image, that's, that's what he was striving for. That you could understand the philosophy just by just by looking at something, you know, because he knew that Krishna was was present in these in these paintings. I'm just going to okay. For the time being, you should complete your San Kirtan painting, and then you have asked about the Krishna book. I have also included an idea for a painting of Krishna showing the universe within the mouth of Mother Yasoda. Srila Prabhupada designed that. I have so many ideas for paintings. And we will require so many expert paintings that you will be able to do them. Here's something that's fascinating, I found. So, Temples were opening up. This is 1968. Temples were really beginning to open up, and there was no deity worship yet. The deity was the painting. The deity was the imagery. So he wanted just just I'll just read it, then I'll explain it to you. We require this service. And we require so many paintings, paintings, books, etc. All we shall have, all we shall sell on world tour with our San, San Kirtan painting. This is the point. We require a lot of pictures in stock. And whenever we open our centers, we, have, we must have at least one Panchatattva, one Vishnu picture, San Kirtan paintings, the spiritual master's picture, and Radha Krishna painting. They are all required. So in another, let, in another letter, which I couldn't find, he was saying to a, 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 a young uh, artist, female artist, he said, simply paint this, these three paintings over and over again. A Panchatattva, a Guru, and a, a Guru Parampara, and a Vishnu. He said, and when a temple opens, we'll simply roll, we'll have stacks of them. And when a temple opens, we'll simply mail them. So he was so he was like, we'll keep them in, in warehouse. And then Prabhupada, not in this one. Just listen to the detail that Prabhupada has, okay? Okay, when he's saying whenever a temple opens, uh, we shall at least send three 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 paintings. And then he says, paraffin painting, paraffin paper. Oh, let me back up. These paintings may be painted on a canvas oil painting. And when they are dried up, they may be rolled together and dispatched by post air mail. The framing, the framework can be done locally. Listen to this. Paraffin paper may be placed between each painting so they do not stick. So he's thinking about this. 
He's so absorbed in every aspect of this. This is samadhi. This is your meditation. That you think, how can I serve Krishna? What are what are the details? You need paraffin paper so they they don't stick. Um, I'd like to tell you the story of this this painting. This is this one. Okay. This painting was painted here in Second Avenue, in the upstairs in Prophet's quarters, in December of 1966. So this is one of the very earliest paintings. Jadarani had done a Panchatattva. And then she had done another painting, which they were, they have some back to God, they have magazines, and I think I should have marked it, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. This was one of the, this was the second painting that she ever did. This was, now, we don't know if this was the first, because this was done many, many, many times over. This image was, was what was sent to different temples. So this is in Boston. They have a copy of this in Washington. We have one here, probably in, in Los Angeles. So I can't say this is the first one. But we know that this was the third painting. So if I'm jumping around. I'm sorry. I've never made a presentation like this before. Am I doing okay? You're proud that you're making first presentation. Oh, <laughs> am I doing okay? I'm not looking yeah, yeah. for your adoration. I'm, I'm keeping your attention. Okay. So. So, in December, Srila Prabhupada called Jadarani in at that time, she didn't even know how to spell her name properly. If you look at the spelling here, it's not correct. <laughs> she didn't even know. So, Srila Prabhupada took one of his Bhagavatam dust, dust covers off, and he said, paint this, but just paint this little bit in the middle of Radha and Krishna in Goloka Vrindavan. So it was from the dust cover that she, that's what she had to work with. So she had practically nothing to look at. And she describes that the printing was very offset. It wasn't really crisp. So the blue was over the red and the red, you know, it was just, you see, it was like really hard for her to figure out what she was looking at. Once I had the first layer of color on the painting, Prabhupada came over and asked me to paint nice garlands hanging from Radha and Krishna's shoulder. He said to make them look like they did in the book cover. But that tiny, but that tiny picture was anything but clear. Besides being only two inches high, it was obviously not made on the best press because the primary color red, yellow, and blue colors did not exactly overlap each other. Bright blue stuck on one side and bright red stuck on, on the other side. It's not easy to see what Rod and Krishna were wearing on their shoulders. I had never ever heard the word garland before. What to speak of sea one. I had seen Hawaiians wearing leis in movies but I did not know that garland and lace were the same thing. Consequently, my garlands looked more like digital strips of gar garden hoses than flowers. <laughs> so she says this looks like more like a garden hose to her. Prapa told me that the trees in the background were desire trees named Kadamba, 
whatever you like you can get from these trees, he said, in this world. From apple trees, you can get apples. From mango trees, mangoes. But in the spiritual world, anything, anything you like, you can have. It sounded magical for sure, but I had no idea what a kadoma tree looked like. <laughs> therefore, trying to print, trying, therefore, trying to copy the tiny print, I made abstract kadumba trees that look more like light green skies, light green skies with dark green, with dark green clouds. And dark green, and dark green stars than a forest of wish-fulfilling trees. When the painting was nearly done, Prabhupada came over and in his distinctive, graceful way, squatted down in front of it. He handed me a small piece of paper in which he had written some Sanskrit words with the diacritic marks indicating their pronunciation. So he wrote this, Namo, Namo, Namo Brahmana Devaya, Go Brahmana Devaya. He wrote this? Huh? He wrote this on this? He wrote it on a piece of paper oh, and gave it to Jadarani, and then Jadarani painted, the, you know, painted it on. Yes, this is a Jadarani. Oh. This is but Jadarani. This it's, is but it's earlier, earlier. 1966. But she's artist professional, yes. Yeah, Shamarani. She's known as Shamarani now. Um, I know Jada, Jada, Jadarani, the most, most famous. Yes. He's uh, the very close to Prabhupada. Yes. Ah, it's her. This is hers. Oh. Because, but it's her earlier. The earliest. This is one of the earliest. Ah, ah, okay. So this one was early. Uh -huh. This is very, this is very early. This is actually a, from a photograph. This was in San Francisco. So this is a, this was a, a form of Krishna that was never installed. This is called Karta Mishra. I love this because it's a painting of a painting. So in the top right hand corner, mm. you see the painting. So it's a painting <laughs> of, a, of, of a painting. So anyway, um, I hope I'm not rambling too much. I wanted to show you this, okay? So, this painting was, the mo for us, it was very, very important. So, maybe if we can come, come around close, so I want to describe this to you, okay? So, the condition of this painting was really bad. You can see how it's cracked. You see that? Mm -hmm. This is a condition in restoration work called alligatoring. You know the skin of the alligator, the crocodile? So it has that texture. What's happened is that the paint has dried. There's no more oil in the paint, and the paint has shrunken. And it's pulling away from the canvas, okay? So this is a enlargement of this. So this is the section here, but it was actually all over the, the canvas. Mm -hmm. And you can see that the, the varnish, they use, they use really cheap materials then, and they've used the wrong varnish, and it began to just sort of disintegrate. It was like dripping down the uh, painting. So the way they had to restore this painting, I find the most amazing. They didn't want to add anything or take away anything, because then you, it's not the original. So the way they restored this painting, after it was washed and the varnish was removed, now they're down to the level of the painting. They put it on a table it's a heat table, and the table heats up a little square of it. And when the paint gets liquefied, they have little tiny tools like you have in your hair. <laughs> little tools, and they push the paint back out. Stretch it out. Yeah, they, they pushed it back into position. They didn't want to add any paint. So the paint that was here had to be manipulated. And just imagine that type of work. 
just imagine how much. This one alone, he said, it took them three years. And this was the last one, and I kept saying, can you send it back, can you send it back? And they wa I wanted to wrap it up. And finally, he, he, there was a big uh, sangha in New Vrindavan, and he said, oh, I'm coming to New Vrindavan. He said, just bring it. And he brought it, and he gave it back, back to us. So, this is a labor of love. You know, this is, this is, so my point to you is, when people would come, when Jadarani came to the temple, Srila Prabhupada asked one of his male disciples, go ask her what she likes to do. Ask her if she has any, any skills. And she said, oh, oh, I like to paint. So she described how she had been in art school for a semester and whatnot. And Srila Prabhupada was so expert in engaging people in their propensities, you know, to fan that spark. Oh, you like to paint? Don't paint for your sense gratification. Paint, paint for, paint for Krishna. Help me, help me spread this movement. Help me present the personality, the form of the Lord. Because most people are impersonalist. Once Srila Prabhupada was on a morning walk here uh, in, in New York, and there was, an, there was a gallery, and there was a, a, a painting in, in, in the window. It was just like lines, just going down, just lines, like, like this. Tilted his head. And in a questioning voice, he said, Bamboo? <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't sure. And then I have a letter where he references in that. He said that people are... Don't paint in personalism. Don't make it void and zero. Present the form of the Lord so people can be attracted to him. So this imagery was so important to him, and he wanted 50 to 100 paintings in every volume. You know, It was so important to him. So he saw the propensity of this person. Oh, you can, and pulled that in. So whatever you like to do, you, you don't have to give it up. He would, Srila Prabhupada would say, just add Krishna. So if you're, like, if you're a good baker, is there anyone, does anyone bake here? Hmm. <laughs> bake, bake and then offer it to the deities. You don't have to give things up. It's not artificial. You don't have to renounce anything, except your bad habits, of course. But the idea is that you can be happy in Krishna, Krishna consciousness. It, it, it's, 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 it's a wonderful thing. Take your skills and for me I was attracted to the artwork and I and I had some managerial skills and I took over the project and I'm so happy to see these and you don't realize that you're probably looking at fifty to sixty thousand dollars worth of restoration work in this room. You know. The coolest pictures it's original. Originals. Oh. These 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 are the earliest and one of them is missing. <laughs> I, I gave it to them. It's missing. What, what, what's that? I'll show you the picture. Now, I, no, we can stay here if that's okay. I brought gifts for. I So, I think it's it's getting late, and I want to say thank you for coming to hear me. I'm a total stranger. You don't. You don't. I don't know any of you. I've never met any of you. So thank you for coming. Uh, thank you. Thank you. It's very interesting. It's what you say, very interesting. And when thank you. For this when Abhay Charan met Srila, met Bhakti Siddhanta for the first time, he said, "Preach, you know, preach in the West." We always hear that, right? Everyone has heard that, right? But do, do you know what he said next? He said, "It will be good for you." And it will be good for those who hear from you. So, Kashi Shwari Prabhu, in asking me to come, it has been really good for me because I've been able to think about this, these things. I haven't done this in 15 years. So, um, so I have...
So in total, I, I restored about 30, 30 paintings. Wow. That's a lot. Yeah, How long did it take? Seven years. Seven years. Seven years. I was working with a group on the West Coast. There's a thing called Krishna magic. You know, it's like, how is this happening? It's by Krishna's arrangement. So I was living in Maryland. My wife and I, we were living. And we had a friend, a god brother of mine. And he came over and said, our daughter is dating a boy. And the father's, and the boy's father has become interested in Krishna consciousness. He's a he's a he's an artist. He's a he's a university. He's a, a scholar. He's a sculptor. He can think in a three-dimensional way. So when he looks at you, he can he can see the back side of you. He thinks in. <laughs> <laughs> so I he said, and he lives like four blocks from your house. And I went over and and I met him and we're talking. And he says, so what do you do? He said, I I'm a sculptor. But I also do art restoration. I teach it on the university level. So I'm doing this project, and four blocks away from me is a university-trained professor who teaches this stuff. And now he's a Hare Krishna. And I'm, I'm saying, wow. So I said, can you help me? He said, sure. So I had a group on the West Coast. I had a group on the East, East Coast. And I would travel, I would travel to Boston, I went to Toronto, I went to New Vrindavan, I went to New York, I went to Philadelphia, and I took all, you know, then I was getting some, notor not notoriety, but it was known that if you have some old paintings, see Pushpavan, he can help you restore them. And people trusted me after a while because they saw what I, had happened here. So this went on for like seven years, and I just was just absorbed in this, you know. Huh? I mean, for donation. Some Sometimes the temples would put up the money. Oh, no. Sometimes we would only clean. You know, not mm. not all the paintings got this type of work. Mm. Um, so here, here, here. So here's here is a painting. This is a perfect example of an image that explains the philosophy. Mm. You see that? Mm -hmm. So I showed this to Brahmananda Prabhu in Vrindavan, and he was present when the artist came. This was the cover to Easy Journey to Other Planets. So you can see the box. See how it's dated? His Sika is really long. This is like <laughs> the, the hippie aspect. It's still in the painting. <laughs> so. So he's going from the material world through the Brahma Jyoti into the spiritual world. So when they, the artist presented this to Prabhupada, Prabhupada said, yes, buy the beads. Mm -hmm. <laughs> buy the beads. Mm -hmm. So one can understand our entire philosophy just by looking at this image. So you see how it was that way. Is the Brahma Jyoti has planets as well? Because you said it. it's it's I c it's symbolic. It's yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not it's not drawn to perfect you know oh. <laughs> unders. Very good for you. <laughs> um, this might be this one. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like this painting. No, it was a different painting. This is also in Krishna book. This I I forget. Oh, this is in Boston. So, this one is here. And this one is yeah. here. Yeah. So this painting was interesting. Let me show you the others, okay? Let me tie that, that in, okay? So this series, oh, you like Jagannath? Yeah, she's, she's, I have a paint, I have a picture for you. So these paintings were done in Boston in 1968. These were done by Jadarani. I found them in the original frames, okay? See that? So when I found, this painting, oh, we had it out of the frame. It's, it's all there. No, it's, no. It's, they changed the frame. Oh, they changed the they frame. Changed. Okay. It was in the original frame, so I knew this came from 1968. This, this was in Boston. Mm -hmm. This was the cover of the Back to Godhead magazine, the month I came to Krishna consciousness. 
this one? Yeah. It was just a little, it was just that. That, that was the cover. Mm -hmm. So when I saw this, I was like, oh, I get to restore this painting and get to clean it. This is in Boston. I think I said that. Six Goswanis. Mm -hmm. She only did four four paintings, and and she was was she was considered not good enough. So they took her other three and painted over them. Mm -hmm. This is the only one that she has left, and this is in private collection. Mm -hmm. So the woman who did this, do you know Daiva Shakti in Vrindavan? Okay, uh, I heard her name. Uh, she's super super well 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 known. So I restored this painting and I brought pictures to her. She was like, I can't. So she said, you've given me my painting again. That's mm. your painting. This is her assistant. Oh, okay. She only did four and they, they decided she wasn't good enough. So. It's beautiful. Why? Why not good enough? I don't know. This one, Jadarani did three of these. What does it mean, please? You just copy? No, three, three, uh, she painted and Versions. then she painted again uh, and she painted again. She painted it three times. Same. But it's probably not no, exactly no. the same. A little, a, a, a little, little different. different. Yeah, 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 because it's impossible to have yeah, the yeah. same way. Yeah. I have this image in my living room. Mm -hmm. Here we see this one. Mm -hmm. We've talked about this one. This was the second painting that Jadarani ever did. Look how bad it is. It's not centered. Mm -hmm. yeah. The arms are enormous and the hands are small. <laughs> <laughs> so Srila Prabhupada asked Jadarani to paint a picture of his Guru Maharaj, Bhakti Siddhanta. He said, mm -hmm. but you must do it very carefully. It must be properly done. So Srila Prabhupada said, we're going to make a grid mm -hmm. and we're going to overlay that onto the photograph and then we'll draw the grid onto the painting and you do each section because he said it has to be done right. Mm -hmm. So Srila Prabhupada was so expert. You know, he was able to tell her how to get over her. I have these that I'm going uh, to be passing out. Oh, great. Yeah, the, great. I, have, I have many of these. Oh. No, because it's like yeah, yeah. Jagurani second. What is this was the second it? one, and then he, she said, what is this? Oh, and Prabhupada says, that is the artist concoction. <laughs> 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 and when Jadarani was painting the picture of Bhakti mm -hmm. Siddhanta, he said, she had painted a little effulgence. He said, don't, don't, don't paint effulgence. And then there were no fingernails. And she and Prophet said, "Why are there not any any fingernails?" And she said, "Well, the, what I'm working from, the photograph is so bad, I can't see the fingernails." He said, "Okay." <laughs> <laughs> this is the one that is missing here. Mm. Mm. Oh, this, this is done by Merle Dar. He was, technically speaking, the best artist. This looks like a photograph. Yeah, yeah that's true. true. He Amazing. would paint with a tiny, tiny brush. Of course, the, the, the back is diffused, but this face, I mean, it just looks so sweet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, incredibly sweet. This is a painting that is enormous, and this is in New Vrindavan. It was in really bad shape. We could not get a sponsor to restore this painting. This would have been a three-year project and many, many thousands of dollars, and we just couldn't do it. So this one never got done. This is called the five rasas. So the five loving relationships that one can have with, with the Supreme Lord are represented in here. Con, um, where's um, con, conjugal? I'm looking upside down. Yeah. You know, you can see the, the different, you know, the passive, friendly, mm -hmm. maternal. This came from, when Srila Prabhupada came to America, he brought five posters with him. And this is a Bengali, and this was one of the posters that he brought, and this was another one. Mm -hmm. 
this is in this uh, this uh, I could go on. I'm sorry. So this was done. Mm -hmm. When you're doing restoration work, you want to see. You're a little bit of like a historian, you know. Mm -hmm. So I went to the Boston Temple, and, and they said, "Oh, we have paintings up in the women's ashram. We'll bring them down." I said, "No." Can I go up and see them in the women's ashram? Because I wanted to see where they were. Okay? I found these paintings behind a closet, a metal cabinet. Mm. And the paintings had hooks that stuck out on the back. You understand? They were round hooks. And the paintings were slammed together, so all the paintings had holes in them from from the hooks from the other painting. So we had to patch this up, and then touch up as you know. And you you can't see, but the and these were filthy. And the man in Maryland took on this this project. This is one of the paintings that I have in my house. This is the painting that I loaned here and as collateral. This was done by Indira. Indira did that painting. Indira's sister, Ekiani, at one time was married briefly to Gopal Krishna's Maharaj. Mm -hmm. Just briefly. <laughs> And Ekiani, they're, they're, they were, I thought they were Indian, but I found out they were from um, Mauritius? No, 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 they're uh, from the Caribbean. They're, Damn. Uh, yeah. Damn. Oh, Damn. From Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. So Indira did this one. And this it's is quite famous, Bilba Mangal. Today. Yeah, this is Bilba Mangal. He's blinded. Uh, you, you know the story? Yeah. So he said, he's staying out of his reach. He said, I'm going to mm -hmm. grab you and put you inside my heart. I'm going to entrap you in my heart. Um, here's a painting. This is my wife. Look how big this painting is. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> this was in the barn at Gitanagri. And here, I said, stand next to the painting for scale. And look how ripped it was. So if you go to Gitanagri, this is in the uh, lunch, the uh, prasadam room today. So what is it? Is it? Yeah, it is. On the wall. It's on the wall. When you go to the... This painting was covered. It was filthy. So let's see if I have anything else. Then I'll just pass out the photos, okay? Uh, let's see. We've seen this. We've seen, this was a different book. We've seen this. There was one painting. I, I, and they said, yeah. so I went down to the Mississippi farm. They said, we have some really early paintings. So I went down there. This painting was from Krishna Book, Volume 1 or 2. What they had done was, they cut the painting down to fit into a frame that they had. <laughs> you know, it's like, you just don't understand these things, you know. Uh, anyway. I, this is an interesting painting, which you you have here, okay? So Jadarani did this in, with the Jagannath series, okay? So this went to a school that we had in New York State. It was called Lake Huntington. And the school, for two, three, four years, you know, it functioned and the, the school closed. That school moved to Gitanagri. So we had little boys, and we had a school, so our two schools merged together. Then the girls' school went to Baltimore, and this painting followed, okay? That school closed down, and then the painting was abandoned. They just left it in the, you know, it's just hanging in an empty room. And it was there for, you know, who knows how long. A god sister of mine came along and recognized that this is something of importance. This is history. So she takes the painting and puts it into her apartment, up on the wall. And then she thinks, I'm getting undressed in front of the painting. This is not right. This is wrong. You know, because you don't, in your sleeping quarters, you don't have pictures of Krishna because it's, it's like, it's not, it's, you know, it, it, it's a mixture. 
So she takes the painting off the wall and puts it in a closet for seven years. Okay? Seven years. So I'm going around and I'm talking and I'm, you know, at that time I'm talking about what I'm doing and I'm showing people. She comes up and says, I have something that I want you to see. Can you come to Baltimore? Sure. So I drove to Baltimore and she pulls the painting out and she goes, I want you to have this. She goes, I don't know what to do with it and I think you have a better clue. So she just gives it to me. And I think, I was in the middle of this project. So we got the painting cleaned, re-varnished re, uh, re it and stretched it again, and I just brought it down and I gave it to Second Avenue because I felt it was in the right the right period. What year was that? Because it wasn't before here, this, no. this one. No. The, um, it was like a couple of years ago? No, no, like around 2000. 2000? Yeah, oh. yeah. And what about this painting? It was not, not before here. This, I don't know, when I came, this painting was here. All these paintings were here at that time, when I got involved in the project. Mm -hmm. How they got here, I don't know that history. Okay. Um, this picture was not here for sure, because this wall was empty. That wall. Well, when, when I came and I started this in 2000, all these paintings were here. Were you here in 2000? No. Okay. We, uh, we came here, like... We started programs like what, 2014, 14, no, 15, 15, 15 maybe. Yeah, but this this picture was not here. I don't know. Mm. Okay. Maybe they stored it. Maybe maybe, maybe it was stored. stored. It, yeah. But maybe it was did. during the. This one has the the ten thousand dollar restoration on it, so I know it was here at, at that time. Oh, maybe it was. Yeah. Well, it was being worked on, maybe. Yes. That's that's why it wasn't here, probably. Uh, when you be here, when Prabhupada be here? No. No? No, I never saw Prabhupada here. It's just interesting because it's like uh, original place, a uh, picture's place. Um, I, I first you saw know? him in Brooklyn oh. on Henry Street. Mm. Here's one last painting and then, you know, we have to stop somewhere. I found this painting in Mayapur and it was in the boys ashram. And it was done by a German devotee named Vasudev. And I have many letters that Prabhupada wrote to Vasudev. So this is Rupa and Sanatana. And, and Lord this is Lord Chaitanya. Uh -huh. And this is Sanatana. Sanatana. And he now has given up. He's just now come from Brayag and he's given up his chatter, his beautiful chatter, and he's traded it with a man. Oh, okay. And he's wearing this a rag. Yes. And at first, Lord Chaitanya was not pleased and when he saw him dressed in a very opulent garment. And, but he was able to understand and he, he traded the garment and he came back and then Lord Chaitanya accepted him. So this painting was in, Ma in Mayapur and I, and I went, oh, ah, another painting. Mm -hmm. It turned out that this painting had been in a fire and, and the paint had... You know how shrink. Yeah, it was cracked and it was full of ash and cinder. And this this was this this was this this was a big project. And ultimately, we returned it to Mayapur. This is a painting that we know we we did we 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 cleaned this and we stretched this one. This is in Gita Nagri. So when Prabhupada came, and there's two there's this one and one more painting. When Prabhupada came to Gita Nagri, in his quarters there was no furniture, there was nothing. It was just an empty, an empty space. So they asked one of the householder couples who lived outside, do you have some furniture, something, a chair or something? So she had a rocking chair and some other things and she had this painting. They had, it, the painting had never been stretched and mounted onto a, 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 you know, the stretcher boards. It was rolled up and she had it in her attic. So they brought it down, and for Prabhupada's room, they pinned it onto the wall. And Prabhupada accepted that, you know. And I, they, when they approached me and said, we have this painting, can you? They said, we'll give this to Gita Nagri, because that's where it belongs if you clean it and, and properly 
preserve it. So we did this one also. And then this one is in New Vrindavan. I don't know anything about this piece of art, artwork. You know, it's Krishna and Balaram swallowing the flames in, mm -hmm. in the forest. There's no signature, there's no, there's no date, there's nothing. But I like the style, hmm. you know. This, this to me, and you see... It's not Indian, original. Yes, I like, I like the way mm -hmm. it looks. So, anyway, uh, I'm sorry to keep going on and no, on. No, no, no. Not so, every picture was made with photos, right? Some of them they they painted from fo like yeah. uh, having photos, but not or, the, uh, or or from posters. This was from uh, uh, from a poster. This was from a poster. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how to do this in a in a democratic way. Mm. So because who gets to choose first? You shuffle. Upside down. Or or, Turn it upside down or we can have numbers, and then we pick a number, and then one and whoever gets okay. I mean. How else do you do? No, it? Just turn it upside down. Shuffle it. Shuffle. No, that's that's too impersonal. Uh. Yeah. I want you to choose a painting like yeah. you might want that one. You know. I would not. If you have, uh, do you have what is Jag? Господи, um, Jag. Yeah. Jag Jagana. No, Jagorani first picture. First pictures do you have? Jagorani first pictures. No. Maybe in the other Amor. Kasha, you just have to manage this. Uh, I'll, take the, I, I'll take them all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think... This one is uh, all Russes, right? Yeah, that's... That. I would like to give this one. That... It, that uh. one. I'm going to give you... You want Jagannath? Actually, no, I would like Jagorani Jagura Jagura. first paint. paint. The first one? Yes, oh, first that, and second. <laughs> that one. I thought you wanted the Jagannath. They're so stylish. Yeah. They're like, like whole... Yeah, beautifully done. It's amazing. These were, I, never seen these I, had a, I have a friend who is a professional photographer, and we, would, we photograph these. You might... You, these are done... The color is perfect. Perfect balance. We shot in digital, and we shot in medium format. So I have color transparencies about the size of this. I can blow these up 20 feet high, 15 feet yeah. wide, and so not the highest resolution. Highest resolution. Wow. So we shot medium format. Are you a photographer? That's exactly. And then we shot digital. Cool. Because I'm, I'm, I make uh, like a um, scanner, you know, the scan, make scanner. Yes. Pictures. I mean, for great quality. You know, um, big scanner, special for professional. Uh -huh. In art uh, gallery, usually they, they, yes. they scan it. Yeah, I actually... But it's very expensive. Yeah, I, but he has original purchases. I actually and went and blew all these uh -huh. up to, like, this size. I have everything in my house, like, this size, mm -hmm. mounted on aluminum. And wow. they're, they're, they're borderless. Mm. And they're... Что они, короче, когда вот художники, ну, они продают so иногда копии, uh, и они на uh, очень хорошие, на больших сканерах делают, короче, печать, yeah. и один в один uh, получается. Ну, как мы можем видеть, что он сделает. Красиво, да? О, мой гад! Это наш профессионал, тогда мы будем в Здесь файл? Да, да. О, мой гад! You can copy it, and but I'd like this back. Yeah. I didn't know. I didn't know when I was going through. I had mm -hmm. one or two, and I thought. Then I found this one, and it has all 17 paintings. So. How can I give it back to you? You give it to me. Unfortunately, I have my computer. I don't have the CD ROM. Oh. <laughs> I, I have CD ROM. I can give you CD ROM. You can no, copy. No, no. I mean, I have it right here. So if oh. I pick up CD ROM, it's right there. Now I do. Oh, I do have it. Mm -hmm. You know, you can. Yes. Mm. I believe something of value, something of value, becomes more valuable mm -hmm. when it's shared. Mm. Yeah. Right. Like, I can keep this and it's great, but if I can give it to you, 
And that's like Krishna, Krishna consciousness. You don't keep it for yourself. You share it. Can we post it all over the internet? <laughs> <laughs> no, please. Well, that, I was going to publish, I wanted to publish a book, and I was telling you that I ran into a lot of copyright issues. Oh. Um, some of the these B are, BBT. are BBT protected, like that's BBT. This, this is considered a protected image. Uh, so, are you going to post on on internet? <laughs> you don't know Pushpavan, okay? <laughs> you don't know me. <laughs> in, I was telling, in 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 Gita Nagri, I was saying in India, there's no thing as copyright, no. especially of images of Bhagavan, because they considered this to be Krishna. This is God. You can worship this. So they say, how can you copyright? and say, this is my image of God. It just, in their brains, you understand the point? Mm -hmm. they just like, so our BBT images are all over India. They've, they've just, you know, you go, oh, that's BBT, that's a, that's a push car, that's a, that's a, mm -hmm. you know, and they've just stolen them. But in a court of law, we would lose. And my wife, for 25, well, 20 years worked in patent and trademark law. So she knows all about this. And uh, she said, in, in India, we don't, we can't stand, you know, we, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So uh, thank you so much, you know. Um, you. You're going to more edit uh, published books about this? I was stuff? going to, and then I ran into so much trouble with, um, Pictures? Copyright. With, with the copyright issues. I think it's like good for his clone, no? For BBT. Because you so, it's so nice, so, I don't know how it's speak English, but well, I'm very impressed. It's they're, so very, they're very happy that I did what I yeah. did, but I, I can't do the other thing. Mm. You understand? Yeah. Thank you for what you did. But you better not publish them. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe you just read and without pictures you can. Actually, this was towards the end, and uh, I, and I was just like. I think it's so valuable, okay. but your novel is a very valuable. Yeah, yeah. Some I wanted to write parts. to write the stories because there's a lot yeah. of stories. Yeah. Have you ever spoken to Yadunath Prabhu, who is in charge of this temple? It it would be really great to have some text next to each, you know, the story well, to next can, to I each painting. Huh? I, I, don't, I don't know all of them, but I can mm -hmm. talk, you know. I, like I said, I don't know where they came from. If you can uh, give me the text, uh, you know, that um, oh. uh, from Jadurani's sure. uh, correspondence sure. from uh, uh, about this like painting. In, like in museums. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some a little I can talk to Jadunath, yeah, yeah, we yeah, can yeah, inframe yeah. it and put to the wall with uh, their permission. Yeah. It's like Next little museum. To, to mm. the <laughs> if they if they want, then I could I could work on that. You know? Okay, I, I'll talk to you. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like for everybody who's there. Like you know, many people come just to see uh, Second Avenue. We don't know about it right. as much as you do. So I think everybody who's like we should give it to Sasha and other devotees who come here regularly. So when other devotees from all over the world come, we could tell them something about those paintings well, that's what, we knew nothing before. That's what they were saying. I said, well, I don't know many, I don't, I was not with Prabhupada very much. If I tell my stories, mm -hmm. we'll be done and having prasadam in 15 minutes, you know, <laughs> but I can talk about the paintings. Mm -hmm. And they said, they said that, that everybody comes and they don't know anything about the paintings. Because when you read about, I think it's people different, yeah. 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 Value. Yeah. This, yeah. because yeah. now it's just pictures, you know, but if you read something, I think it's people say, wow. Yeah. 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 Especially yeah. when you know that it's original yeah. Yeah. picture. Yeah. Yeah, one, we were hanging the paintings and someone po poked his head in and said, is this a, an art gallery? Mm. <laughs> this one wa walking, walking by. Mm. We can take whatever you want. I mean, you can take two, three, four, you know. If there was any picture like that? Yes. It's a picture. There's a photo. Yeah. And I was looking for the photograph, which I have. I was going to bring it. Yeah. And all that Jadarani did was she did so this. So uh, this added. is the deities and Srila Prabhupada was chanting? No, no, no. This, this is in San Francisco. Uh -huh. This is 1968. This is the first California temple. Mm -hmm. This was, this is not a deity that's installed. This is just a form mm -hmm. that they got from a, like a, 
a antique store. Mm -hmm. And his name is Kartan Mishra. So they would dress him up, but he was never worshipped. He's never, oh, never, you know, it's not formal. But I love it because you see the hippie rug on the wall. So it's like dating it. You see the hippie wall? And then, and then the painting of a painting. To me, it's just it's like, it's like a whole other dimension. Mm -hmm. yeah. The painting of yeah, a painting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she actually took. And she the father was chanting, right? You know, he's speaking, yeah. I think. And you see how this lettering, mm -hmm. this was very hippie, you know. <laughs> this uh, So you can see the influences, you know. You can mm -hmm. look at it and you see that mm -hmm. as a historian, he, he can see things. So, And I love the door, the board. You see the board with, with the. Uh, with the knots or the nails or something. Anyway. But he like uh, no Prabhupada. He he likes classical, like old classical style. Because a lot of uh, pictures what I saw, you know, in big books, you know, big yes. books, there is very you know classical style. Uh, Most that period came later. Mm. I was focusing on nineteen. My restoration mm -hmm. work, mm -hmm. sixty six to seventy. I mean, the style changes. Like then the style changes. Then oh. the BBT, they call it um, more uh, classical, more Italian. Mm -hmm. The men, the bare-chested, yeah. beautiful, and then because women. Sometimes they copy, you know, they copy a lot of pictures. From the European style, so the Renaissance yeah, yeah. style. That incorporated. Mm -hmm. But these, do you know this term, outsider art? What that means is an artist who likes to paint or make art but has no, no, no formal training. Mm -hmm. Just, they, they just like to paint. Mm -hmm. So this is more like outsider art. These were unpolished. Mm -hmm. And some people think they're like primitive. To me, these are the most beautiful. Yet others may really value it as anything. Yeah, it's just a difference. So I wanted to do the early, of course the earliest paintings yeah. were in the most mm -hmm. dire condition. You know. Yeah, this is something special because Jadurani is known for her very artistic, high quality paintings, but now we can see the early days, yeah. you know, of her work. Yeah. yeah, because it's so different. I'm never seen her paint. Yeah. Just... This one, this one, this one, this one is Jadurani. Oh, and that one. So almost all of these are Jadurani. Mm -hmm. And who painted this? I forgot. Merle Dar. Merle with the, you know, flute, the Merle? <laughs> That's Merle Dar. Easy to remember. Yeah. <laughs> Are you Merle? No, no, no. Rada Merle Dar. Oh, easy. Merle Dar. Yeah. 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 I had the key to Prabhupada's quarters in Brooklyn, and I would sleep in Prabhupada's quarters every night. Just not that I'm walking around. Actually, we're told don't walk around. But just if someone throws a rock through the window or someone tries to break in. So I had the key to Prabhupada's quarters, so every night I would go. And then after a while I said to Merle Dar, well, why don't you join me? I don't want to sleep alone. So we, he was much older than I was. And he was like, you have the key to Prabhupada's quarters and you're inviting me? Yeah. <laughs> you're inviting me. So we would go in the evening, we would read, it would be quiet. And uh, he's, he was just so good. Was he a professional painter, or he was like those? I don't know his story. Mm -hmm. One of the artists was named Parikshit, mm -hmm. and then he became an artist for Disney. Mm -hmm. wow. After after he, you know, his devotional time and life, he moved out of the temple. He would paint the backdrops for the uh, for the cartoons and for you know, oh. yeah, he was. He, and he, he made very, very good money for it. He lives in Hawaii now, and he still, he still paints. He's still around? Yeah. yeah. Okay. His name is Doug Ball, Douglas Ball. He would lead the most beautiful kirtans. His voice was like an angel. Oh, just. Is not, he black? No, he's white. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything? I mean, I mean we can. Uh, <laughs> After they've been restored, are they like protected or something? So they're not Everything dead? is, there's enamel, there's the varnish. 
-hmm. Every they're all varnished. There, there is they're not touching the air. Mm -hmm. It's like okay. a sandwich. Mm -hmm. So you've got the mylar in the back, the canvas, mm -hmm. and then multiple you know layers of varnish on the front. That's why I could I I could touch. Okay. So they're not exposed to the air. So basically, they're like safe for a long time. They're safe. Nara Nara Narayan, the Russian. Uh, he was. A, uh, he spoke in such a funny way. He said, I'm trying to restore the paintings so they last another 10,000 years. Because <laughs> we say that Kali Yuga, the, the Hare Krishna movement, will last for 10,000 years. So he said, I'm restoring so they last for 10,000. <laughs> and I'm not charging you 10,000. <laughs> he was a, anyway. One more question. Sure. When you showed the, this painting before restoration on your mm -hmm. picture, Look, it looked a little different, like the, the color. color. Yes. Yeah, it was yeah. more deep blue, white yeah. salt. Because this is the actual color, and I was just taking a, a, a quick snapshot. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. so this is, this this is, is actual, actual color. Ah, okay. yeah. I was shocked too. Uh -huh. you know? um, and then when they published, I think they, they toned it down a bit. Mm -hmm. you know? But I actually got the book cover and put it up. But this, this, nothing was added, nothing was taken away. So this painting was seen by Shiva Prabhupada? Well, the artists would come and make a presentation. I mean, the original one. I, I would imagine, yes. Um, we know that this one was. This one? This one was sort of like this. It's not in the period. We did we did clean it. Mm -hmm. We did put fresh varnish on it. We did not put the fancy the mylar backing. Mm -hmm. So because we had a budget, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, and who painted this? I can't tell. It would be very common for m all the artists would paint on the same the same painting. Mm -hmm. It's not like so. It'd be like egoless. It's not like this is my painting. So they would paint, you know, you paint in the morning and then in the afternoon you paint, you oh, paint. Many devotees paint one Many picture. paint, yes. Wow. I have a letter here where Prabhupada is saying, Jadarani is sick and these are the Krishna book paintings and some are half done. Go to Boston and if it's okay with her, maybe you could finish them. <laughs> And usually people who create, that their, their ego is like exactly. big, you know, this is my thing. It's you know. my vision, how does somebody get it? Right, right. You know, you, you know. And also the saying, many cooks spoil the soup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But the idea was that, um, that it was, it was, Krishna was manifesting himself and, and you should not take any, any pride, you know. Mm -hmm. so. Prabhupada like uh, some mantras on the pictures? Yes. Because it's, I think it's earliest. Yes, like um, yes. in earliest pictures there is a, I saw it's a yes. lot of, uh, they have a lot of uh, mantras on Once the pictures. Once again, so there's more information. Mm -hmm. So this mantra, Go Brahmana Hitaya Chaja Gaditaya mm -hmm. Krishna Govindaya Namona Maha. So the idea is that Krishna is the friend of the cow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he's go Brahmana, Hitayacha. When Prabhupada left body, it's style art of, uh, no, it's corner, I don't know, Krishna change or no? no change, it's changing. I mean, uh, because I know it's Prabhupada, she, uh, well, he, he, uh, he look for some art, art mm -hmm. and he said it's Krishna, so it's funny, it's not Krishna, or um, he want uh, uh, devotees paint exactly what um, in the Bhagavad Gita, mm -hmm. like uh, holy holy books story. Короче, можем объяснить, что, короче, я читала о том, что, допустим, Прохопада, он хотел, чтобы именно из то, что вот в Писаниях написано, те сцены были, допустим, какие-то сцены, которые не указаны, не были художник сам, который придумал, ему не нравились. То есть Yeah, so Prabhupada was, uh, he wanted to strictly follow the description of uh, Krishna's pastimes as being 
yeah. described in the Shastra as to be depicted in yes. the pictures. Yes. Without whimsical, yes. uh, you know, I actually have a letter which I didn't read, and Srila Prabhupada says this is nice, but it's not this. Bona fide. this it's not bona fide. Mm -hmm. He said the painting is nice, but what mm -hmm. you have done is not acceptable. Please do not do this again. Mm -hmm. this, this, and this, the artist would mm -hmm. would would write letters and questions and questions. How do we depict Lord Varaha? Because he's, he's a pig, you know, he's a boar. <laughs> How do we show Krishna as a pig, you know? How do we do that? And Srila Prabhupada would very much explain, you know, in some depictions, he's half man, half boar, like Lord Nishingadev. Mm -hmm. But in the Bhagavatam, it said he appeared completely as a boar. Mm. You know, so it was always a... Actually, the, the article, the, the title of the article in the Back to Godhead is Painting Under, Under Authority. Painting under superior authority. So mm. does, does that help? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're they're not whimsical. Yeah, and she she asked after the Prabhupada left the body, is anything changed or like all the um, like uh, the devotees? Yeah, yeah, like standards. like everybody followed this instruction or some of the devotees they can paint something. Both, Both? Uh, but. What had happened was that there was about 1,200 paintings done during the BBT era, when, when the studios were active and fully funded. The studios first were in Boston, then they came to New York, and then they went to Los Angeles. So about 1,200 for the Chaitanya Charitamrita, the Bhagavatam, and all of the other books. And after, after the publication work was basically done, the studios began, they, the funding sort of was difficult to come by, and then, so we have about 1,200 of these paintings. And mm -hmm. Many of them are lost. Um, I didn't go into that, I don't know. Some of these paintings, the stories of the condition I found them in is really sad. Like abandonment, abuse. This painting it's always it's always they say why is it always and the last place you 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 look mm -hmm. anyway because when you find it you stop looking mm -hmm. right yeah. right mm -hmm. that's true this painting was thrown away within a garbage can. Oh, mm. it's one of the most beautiful. Yeah, and it was broken on three on three corners. Mm. The end. The, so, the amount of stress on the canvas was incredible. And they brought it to me on a piece of cardboard, stiff cardboard, and they said, "Can you fix this?" And something had leaned against it, and they got the circular cracks. You can like the rings of a tree, mm. so that some of these paintings were just the stories are just horrendous. You know, it's like, how, you know, how could you not understand that? How could you? This painting, Kashi Shor's favorite painting. This one, this one was thrown away in New Vrindavan. Was on, it was in a field. Just thrown on the side, the side of the road. It's hard to understand. Mm -hmm. How could you uh, abuse children? How could you murder? How could you? It's inconceivable to you, but to somebody else who has like no, no higher intelligence, they don't make. How could people blow each other up? How could how? How can ISIS exist? You know, how, it's like, it's, it's inconceivable. But I just suppose that it was in the temple in Vindavan, and they you would, supposed to know what that means. You would think. Yeah. But the stories are, you know, it, it, it's a mixed thing. But so for me, it's like... <laughs> this painting wasn't restored, right? No, this and painting is like five, it? six feet long. Feet where is it now? It's what in Vrindavan. Vrindavan. In pity condition still. Huh? In pity condition. Really bad condition. The, the paint is chipping off. 
big pieces of paint are, are chipping off now. And, and this, the, the, the scope of that restoration was just beyond, you know, beyond what Nara, but beyond what Nathan Zuckheim was willing to do. And he had done a lot. He had really put in a lot of effort. So I couldn't say, no, you have to do this, you know. Of course. So you have to draw the line and know what you can and, and can't do. So. That painting. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. The photographer who photographed all of these had a, he, he also did music. And he went over to do music at a man's house. And he said, yeah, 30 years ago, I gave a donation in Boston and they gave me a painting. So, and there, and there, there it was. It was just a painting just in, in someone's living room, you know. And it's a beautiful painting. We just, we just, it's fuzzy, it's, it's, it's out of focus. Yeah, but it's like so authentic looking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What is what has happened here? Who is this uh, man? Right, yes, and he gives some this Krishna. I mean, what action? Это сели во все формы взаимоотношений. Друг Кришна, друг Кришна что-то дает Кришне. Не знаю, художник знает, наверное. Просто мальчики, дружеские отношения, родительские отношения, супружеские отношения, индивидуальные отношения. Oh, that's hurting, right? Well, for uh, seven months I was living with a friend because we had, our house was being restored. I had such a great fortune to stay with you at your house for one week. Yeah, many years ago. Mm -hmm. I sometimes have to look at my driver's license to get my address because... <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Uh, 14.5. Okay, ready?